yes, you should apply. Every <laughs> single one of you should apply to do archaeological field work. It's just if you're here and you're interested, then you should be setting yourself up to do it. Uh, if you, are you fit and healthy? You really need to be healthy. You've got to be fit. You're going to be, if you're in the Mediterranean, um, you're going to be doing your own digging. It's as simple as that. Um, the Egyptologists get a cushy. They have workers. Um, the local workers, they, that's how they earn their living over there. They all get employed. If you don't employ them, then you're putting everybody out of work. And it's been something that's been happening sort of for over 100 years. Um, so, but if you're in the Mediterranean, you have to do your own digging, which means you've got a backfill. Backfilling is what all the first, if you've never been on a dig before, you will do backfilling. Backfilling is where all the dirt that has been dug out of the hole to see all the artefacts and all the wonderful architecture, etc., etc., has to be put back into the hole to preserve the site itself. Um, in a lot of cases, in the past, um, filling, backfilling hasn't occurred and all the architecture, all the artefacts, everything has been destroyed and eroded away. So it is now a common practice to backfill. So if you're in the Mediterranean, get used to working, get used to working hard. It is hot, it is 40 degrees, it is humid and it's great because you've got lots of retzini you can drink, so that's all good. Um, yes, um, however, if you are in Egypt, you still need to be fit. I'm told that walking up mountains and going down shafts and climbing into stifling tombs is really hard work. So, you know, make sure you're all really fit for that, okay? Um, also, you need to be um, part team, team players. Basically, you can't be an individual on a dig site. Everybody is there to do a job and you're all part of a team trying to get a job done together. Um, you also need to get along with everybody so you can't have one of those really abrasive kind of personalities and expect that it's all going to be great because you've got to live six weeks with these people and work side by side with them every day. Um, so watch your personal hygiene. Um, um, also, yes, yes. And you need to have a sound academic record. Um, so work really hard. Volunteer for as much as you can. Um, keep your grades up. That's going to make you stand out more than anything else that you can do. And if you say all of these things, it's for you. And you should be doing it. And you definitely should be doing it. Okay, you need to keep in mind a few things. Um, some people may never have actually been outside of Australia. And in that case, it's going to be a cultural shock. Like, literally a cultural shock. You're going to be in a different environment with different people, different cultures, different foods. Nothing that you eat over there is probably going to be anything like what your mum makes for you. So you've just got to roll with the punches when you're away and you're in a foreign country. Um, if it's a cultural thing for women, for instance, if you're in a country that may have regulations, you need to cover yourself. If you've got to wear a scarf, you have to wear a scarf and you can't complain about doing it because it's just part of the gig. Uh, funding. You need to have some money behind you to go. So you need to start planning. So. Uh, if they say that you need to have money for six weeks, take money for eight weeks because you can guarantee something in your budget will blow out and there's nothing worse than being a long way from home and not having any money or anything to do or, or being able to get any money trans transferred to you for whatever reason. So make sure you've always got more than you need. There are some funding options here from Macquarie University students, um, which we will look at a bit later on. So, uh, prerequisites, if you're looking to go to Egypt, uh, the first one is, of course, AHIS 170, Introduction to Egyptian Archaeology. The second one uh, isn't necessarily a prerequisite, but it's recommended. That's just called Archaeology and Society, so it's a general archaeological unit. Uh, the next one is, of course, uh, hieroglyphs. You need a uh, good uh, experience within hieroglyphs, so that's uh, AHIS 278, uh, HPG 860. Uh, and then the next one you want to have is, uh, oh, of course, Ancient Egyptian Culture and Society, so 280 or 870. And then the last one is uh, Methods and Techniques of Egyptian Archaeology, so AHIS 390, uh, um, 866. So as you can see, these are a mixture of archaeology and general history language units. Uh, you need all of this. Um, of course, uh, the, the cool thing about Egypt, because uh, Macquarie uh, Egyptian excavations work in the Christmas holidays, so between November and January, you can actually take the, the official unit, uh, so uh, 347 811, before or after you go. If you take the unit before you go, you can write an essay on the things that the, you know, the, the excavators are doing there, and you'll be familiar with the work before you go there. If you do it after, you can do it on something that you've helped with there. 
So um, you really need to discuss this with your director. There are pros and cons of each, um, and some directors might just say, do it when you get back. So that's Egypt. Um, here are prerequisites for your uh, Near East or Mediterranean options. Um, you do have AS170, so Egyptian Archaeology, and AS230, um, Archaeology and Society. Um, both are really important for just getting familiar with um, concepts, and also you get to work with um, archaeological artifacts, which is really important uh, for before you go on a dig. And then there's AS231 slash 331. This is Prehistory to Pompeii, the Archaeology of Ancient Italy. Um, so that's pretty much an invaluable unit uh, to have before you go on um, a Roman or Mediterranean dig. And also keep in mind, you can um, do it, uh, you can do the written component semester one or semester two. It really depends on the dig that you go, um, what time of year that's at. So just discuss this with Kenji or Stephen Llewellyn, who'll be supervising the written component.